In this video we're going to talk about how we can define uh, what goes in a class and it's pretty consistent amongst all classes uh, but we really need to know how to narrow it down. So for this we're going to create a quick little example. What we're going to do is we're going to think about um, a video game and that video in most video games there's a lot of classes in, um, and objects that are made from those classes. So the game we're going to think about is the game Halo. Classic first person shooter for the original Xbox and since re since then re released on multiple consoles. Um, but in Halo, Halo has a special class that's very consistent amongst all of its games. That class is called the player class. Now, when you're playing a single game, a single player campaign game, of course, you're only ever going to see one instance of the player class. However, when you're playing a multiplayer game, such as an online uh, battle, you might see 16 instances of the class. Now, of course, they're not all drawn at the same location. They don't all look the same, but that's what the attributes do. They create a common um, set of functionality and make it unique by defining exactly what those values are. So in Halo, the player class might be made up of certain attributes such as health, guns, Grenades. What else? Um, a call sign, maybe. So we want to call the player. And maybe their location. So those might be the attributes of the player. But what behaviors can a player perform? Well, a player can perform all the basic things like move, jump, shoot, all sorts of things, etc. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a visual design of what a class looks like. And this is very typical amongst most programmers. This is something called a class diagram. It's a visual aid to help us see exactly what the class is comprised of. So in order to do this, the system that we do, or sorry, the, the symbology that we choose to do here is going to be something like this. We create a rectangle, and that rectangle is made up of three parts. The first part is the name. So what is the class's name? In this case, we're going to call it the player class. The second part, the part right below the name, is the attribute section. So this is for attributes. You can read this. So that's for your attributes. And of course down here we have our behaviors. So let's take a quick look of how we're actually going to do this. We said a player class is going to be made up of things like health. So health is probably an integer. So I'm actually going to define the data type that I want to use here. And roughly the variable name that I plan on using for it. I don't need to define it further such as um, I'm instantiating or anything. However, if I do know a base starting value, I can state that in here as well. So maybe it has a starting value of 100. I don't need any semicolons or anything like that. This is very um, informal. The next thing I might have is a set of guns. Now, of course, this is a first person shooter, so there may be a certain number of guns you can hold. Halo is actually limited at two guns, but just to keep it simple, I'm actually going to give them just, I'm just going to create this using a list. And maybe that list is made up of gun objects. You can just call this guns for now. You might also have grenades. How many of them do you have? Well, let's use an integer, grenades. And of course, it's going to have a string for the call sign, since that's a name. And you might have for the location. Now, this is a three dimensional game, so it's probably going to be used something similar to a vector three which is an x, y, z coordinate. So I'll just call this location. I haven't really specified anything else other than just what my attributes are. Below that, I got my behaviors. Now the behaviors are all the actions that this given class can perform. So in this case, we can move. So how do we actually move? Well, we can do things like, um, will you need any return type or anything like that? Uh, so when we're defining the behaviors, we want to return all that information. So this isn't going to return anything, so I'm going to say void move. And I want to specify any parameter. So for example, if I'm moving, 
I need a direction that I'm going to move in. Well, this is a three-dimensional game, so it's probably going to be a vector three. Vector three, direction. I don't need to specify the functionality here yet. This is just a general look of what's going to be made up and what's going to be made in the game. So on top of that, we also have jump. I'm probably not going to need anything here other than um, to trigger the jump and give it an upward velocity. So I'm not going to really have any parameters. Finally, I'm going to want to shoot. So in order to shoot, and maybe in this case this doesn't return anything as well, but maybe it does. It's up to you. In this case, I'm not going to have it return anything. So I'm just going to have my shoot subprogram. It's probably going to need a couple pieces of information, such as which gun am I shooting with? Gun. Not only that, what direction am I shooting in? So again, this is going to be a vector three. Direction. So what you see here is a full class diagram, and our job is to be as detailed as possible. Ideally speaking, you should be able to hand this class diagram off to a full-fledged programmer, and they should be able to create this class with very little questioning. Um, bear in mind, in fact, they know the, they know what the rest of the program looks like in the layout of it. So again, what we have here is a blueprint, and that blueprint just defines what will happen or what type of functionality and data storage we will have if we were to create an instance of this class or a collection of instances of this class. If you were, if you were playing Halo, what other objects do you think you could come up with that are that exist in the game? Things like bullets, vehicles, so you have the warthog, you have the ghost, you have the banshee, all these different vehicles. These are different classes and all these pieces work together. So for example, the vehicle class may be made up of other things like a tire class a steering wheel class because they have their own attributes and their own behaviors, their rotation, the speed and whatnot. All these different things are different chunks of the same system. So that is what it is to create a class diagram, something that we're going to need quite a bit in the near future.